is one of the most vital key that can bring one to where God has prepared for him. And that is why in every time and season you see people changing levels. Your change of level is not limited to a particular year. It's supposed to be continuous. Proverbs 4 verse 18, the path of the jaws like a shining light that shineth brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. So the more wisdom you secure and choose to walk in, the closer you enter to your appointed place. No one enters his promised land by chance or by accident. There must be a conscious walk on your path. You must consciously walk at it. Reading the book Winning Invisible Battles, Papa said something. I'm not surprised at where we are. I would have rather been surprised if we were not there. He said, why? Because we have been treading on it for the past 20 years. So arriving at your promised land can never be a coincidence. It can never be by chance. It can never be by accident. You must consciously walk at it. What you do today determines where you find yourself tomorrow. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose. So wisdom places a demand that you become sensitive to times and the seasons of your life. Becoming sensitive to times and seasons of your life places caution on you on what to do and what not to do. The sons of Issachar, they were men of understanding. As scripture said, they knew what Israel ought to do. And their brethren was at their command. Knowing what to do gives you an edge over those who don't know what to do. And you know when you don't know what to do, you are bound to do what you are not supposed to do. The place has already been confirmed by God, but you need to work it. You need to do the right thing. You need to press so that you can reach where God has prepared for you. You hear me? Everybody seated here now, there is a place prepared for you. I say, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you a future, a hope, an unexpected end. As a commission, we are in one of the most heated revival season and taking advantage of this revival can bring about a sudden turnaround. Jesus wept in Luke chapter 19 Thing from verse 41 down to verse 44 that they knew not the hour of their visitation you know when you don't know your hour of visitation you just begin to while away time doing things that are not necessary doing things that will not contribute to your rising or to your change of status but when you know that it is your hour of visitation you begin to press doing only the right thing that can guarantee you the right results But there will be need for us to know what this revival can bring about. 
No, we have been talking what is revival, what is revival, what is revival. Now we have known what this revival is. But let's look at two key proofs of this revival. Every time a revival sparks off, it steers up the move of the Spirit across every area of life, across every age, bringing about supernatural turn around. A revival cannot take place in your life now and your family is not affected. A revival cannot take place now and your children not affected. When God moves, he moves complete. His move is affected in every area. No side is left. Every side is touched. So you can't desire a change in your life now or for your family and God not do, and God now bypass a particular one, do some and leave some. No! Every part will be affected. What sustains the hand of God in your life is the revival you spark. So for your family now, for your career, you hear me? There is no aspect of your career that can be on the same spot when a revival takes place. Your business cannot be on the same spot when a revival takes place. There will be a positive movement, a positive change. There will be an enlargement. New dimensions of open doors. New waves of open heaven. Why? A revival cut across every area. Every area. So I will pour my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters. They shall dream dreams and your old men they shall do what? See vision. So every time there is an outpouring of the spirit, every area is affected. Until the spirit be poured upon us from on high and the wilderness shall become like a fruitful field and the fruitful field be counted for a forest. Hear me? Before October 7, 2018, there will be commotion in LFC Lafia. There will be divers torn around. If you like, say amen. No. There will be supernatural increases. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Nothing can stop this move. Why? The Lord of hosts has proposed and who shall this annul? His hand is stretched out and no one can turn it back. It's an unstoppable move. You either move with it or the thing clear you out. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? The best thing that can happen to you is to join the move because every move of God moves people forward. It moves people forward. It makes their life better. Our life has been designed for sequence of glory. One face of glory to another face of glory. So you must be expectant that something must break out for you. Though thy beginning be small, he said thy latter end shall greatly increase. Jesus part of the first revival after he was through with them. In Acts chapter 9 or chapter 11, they refer to Peter, the gods have come down to us. But when he started, he started as a fisherman. But later he ended up as a god. You hear me? No revival leaves you on the same spot. Every revival brings about a change of form, a change of status. A little one shall be like a thousand, and a small one like a great nation. Anyone that has mocked you, despised you, before this revival will be over, they will be the ones that will still gather to celebrate with you. If you are saying amen, say better amen. God cannot come down in a revival move and things remain the same in your life. No way. Allow your mockers to keep mocking. But keep your focus on the revival. If you are, if you are saying amen, say better amen. Yeah. 
So keep your focus on the revival. Keep your focus on the revival. He said, I have not said to the seed of Jacob to seek me in vain. I have not said to the seed of Jacob to seek me in vain. You hear me? You are not wasting your time engaging in prayer. You are not wasting your time going out for outreach. You will soon be in the show that people will begin to talk about. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. I say you will soon be the show. Amen. I say you will soon be the show. Amen. So when a revival kicks off and you consciously believe it and take your position, the truth is God sets you apart for honor. Changes everything around you. No wonder in Psalm 126, it said, When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, he said, We were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with singing. Then said the hidden among themselves, The Lord have done great things for them. The Lord have done great things for us. Whereof we are glad. He said, Turn again our captivity, O Lord, like the streams in the south. Turn again. Turn again. Turn again. Somebody's own will be turned today. If you are saying again, if you are saying amen, say better amen. I like that songwriter. I said, Everything is turning around for my good. 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 I can see everything. 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 Hear me? We cannot end up the way we started. We must end up more dignified. When you understand what is in place for you in a revival, you are sure of what, where you will end. <laughs> Job said, all the days of my appointed time will I wait until my change come. A revival holds for you a certain change. A change of story. A change of status. We be may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. When you are in a revival, you must not end up a weeping man, a weeping woman. You must end up in laughter. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better. Amen. amen. That's the turn around we are talking about. Allow all the mockers to be mocking, but mind the revival. Allow all the enchanters to be chanting, but mind the revival. <laughs> I hope you know a revival is double edged. It comes for blessing, it also comes for vengeance. Oh, you don't know? Oh, a revival holds a double edge. It comes for blessing, it also comes for vengeance. That's why in this revival, every of your stoppers will be stopped. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Anyone that is against God's plan and program for you will be cleared out. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. What are the proofs of a revival again? When the move of God is on motion, the spirit of prayer and supplication comes upon the people. Bringing about the outburst of testimonies. Increase in the church. That's why a praying church can never stop experiencing the hand of God. What puts the hand of God at work is constant prayer. If you look at Acts chapter 2, and they prayed steadfastly, and they stayed on continuously. The more the prayer, the more the signs, the more the wonders, the more the visitation, the more the turnaround. You can't stop the act of God until you stop the prayer. 
Check it. Anytime the enemy begins to attack your prayer life, he wants to stop you from being a partaker of the blessings of God. He wants to reduce you from experiencing the wonders of God. He wants to delist you from being a partaker of the new things that God is bringing to pass. The greatest attack on, the, on any believer is his prayer life. I'm not going. Every day prayer, every day prayer, every day prayer. I'm not going. Don't come up. Stay. Nothing moves destiny forward like prayer. Oh, you don't know? Prayer places a demand on the hand of God for things to work in your life. So you are not to be begged. Do, do anybody beg you to breathe? Pray, prayer is like breathing. The same way you breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. That is how prayer is to your spirit, to your destiny, to your life. Nothing works until prayer is made. As anointed as Jesus is, Loaded with all the backings and giftings of heaven, he still needed to pray to fulfill his assignment. How much more you? What will be your assignment? It's normal everywhere. There are some people you beg them to go for prayer. But when they have challenges, fire brigade. They can even sleep in church for you. That God must come down. You ask them what is happening. I'm waiting on the Lord. Waiting they have never done before. Hear me? God is not a fire brigade God. The Lord is with you while you are with him. If you seek him, he shall be found of you. If you also forsake him, he will also do what? Forsake you. God is not a fire brigade God. He says, seek you the Lord now that he may be found. He said, call upon him now that he is near. If not for prayer, the church in Lagos wouldn't have arrived at where it is now. When that church started, they were praying every day. Minimum 400 persons every day in prayer. Morning prayer, afternoon prayer. The church was just growing, growing sporadically. From 1,000 to 3,000 to 5,000. From 5,000 to 9,000 to 11,000. From 11,000 to 15,000. Until they hit 40,000. And God told Papa that uh, you are overdue to leave this place. So all the churches within the neighborhood, they started thanking God that this troubler, this troubler is moving. Let's see how the church will grow there. So they started planting all their churches around increasing their speakers. As the church left, the revival shifted to Canaan land. They were waiting for the church to close in Canaan land. They are running four services in Canaan land. Five services with over 200 persons in attendance. I hope you know their own counting is different from our own. Their own, they count from gates. As you are coming, they are counting you. As you are coming, they will stop your car. One, two, three, four, enter. That's how they count everybody. You can't stop a revival. You are either in it or you are not at all. You can't stop a revival. Hear me? The revival you spark off now as a man, as a woman, is the one that follow you to your house. Youngest, young men, you want to marry. Hear me? You need a revival. You need the praying grace to follow you to your husband's house. Why? Because marriage has its own storm. It has its own challenges. 
it has its own crisis moment. If you are not a praying man and a praying woman, you will be looking for prayer house where you will be buying anointing oil 20,000. I'm telling you the truth. And you'll be looking for special prayer contractors that you pay 50,000 to fast for you. They nail a fast. They go collect your money, eat pepper soup. Now me, they tell you the truth. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I remember one that collected my elder sister's money. <laughs> so he said he came to pray. He has collected the money or pocketed. My mom was just watching him. So when it was a around two, three, he now woke up. My mom said, keep quiet, yeah. He said, I've been watching you. You have slept till now. You want to come and do fire brigade prayer for us? Oh yeah, begin to go. That's what they do to you. Hear me? Every one of you here has what it takes to pray. All of you, you have what it takes to pray. Nobody can pray for you the way you can pray for yourself. mistake about it the measure of your prayer will determine the measure of your fulfillment the measure of your prayer will determine the measure of success the measure of your prayer will determine the size of your open heaven so keep postponing prayer postpone it keep saying I'm tired you are only delisting yourself, delaying yourself from reaching where God has prepared for you. But that will not be your testimony. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. What does this revival hold for me? Because you must know what it holds for you before you can give yourself wholeheartedly to it. What you have not been able to confirm that has a stake of blessing for you, you may not be serious. You may not be serious. That's why even pastors that are not serious with prayer, they look for marine spirits to give them power. But oh, you don't know. It's happening already now. They go and buy charm and buy automobile ring. <laughs> you know the ring they call automobile. When they wear that ring, they will just jazz you. Some of them have thirties buried. But it doesn't last. I remember one of my friends wanted to go and start his ministry. He was a pastor here. He started telling me that uh, uh, someone was telling him that there's a way they do it too. That they will arrange some people in the church that will be perusing members. Finding out members that have problems. Say, you there, you there, Sister Jane. Stand up. As I was praying this morning, the Spirit of God was showing me everything about you. Now lie. They have people inside the church that is giving them details of people's challenge. So the next thing, he will begin to prophesy. Many of you are already victims. You have been to such places. So I told him, if you go, that will begin, be the beginning of your poverty. I said, don't go. It's either God call you or you had missed call. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Huh? It's either God call you or you had what? Missed call. So if God call you, the only way to eat is word and prayer. Go and pray dig deep in the world, it must work. It may not be rosy from the start, but it must work. And that's how he left. Today his church is well over 4,000. It's 
well over 4,000. Please don't look for shortcuts. You may end your journey short. What are the proofs? What does a reviver has in store for you? One thing that a reviver will do for every one of us, it brings us, it rescues us, it delivers us from the dungeon, from the trap of Satan. Until you are free from satanic manipulation, you are not yet free. Until you are free from satanic bondage, you are not yet free. Until you are free from satanic embargo, you are not yet free. So staying in a revival is your surest bait. You hear me? <laughs> you can be a pastor and be in bondage. Let me mention two. One young man, I think I've mentioned it before, he felt he had a call, the anointing to pray for people and they will fall down. So he now got visa to travel to US. He felt, he failed to deal with his foundation. Nothing attacks destiny like foundation. That's why when I look at young men doing garagara now, I just look at them and laugh. I know their foundation is about to disgrace them. Me, I know. Me, I know. He left. He traveled to the U.S. So he was now going for one preaching engagement. They will give him chicken in $500. He will go to another place. He can go to five places in a week. He will be getting $700, $1,500. One day he was sleeping. The demons of his father's house, the strong men, we call them house of wickedness. So, he was just resting as he woke up in a trance. Joseph! He was shouting, The blood of Jesus against you! He said, Keep quiet. We are from Ororope. <laughs> How many of you know Ororope? <laughs> He's in Delta State. <laughs> say, we are from Aurora. He say, I bind you. He say, keep quiet. So shut up. He say, you will go back to your village. You, we, you, we, we came to take you back to your village. Say, I bind you. He say, keep quiet. You are coming back to your village. Before you know what's happening, all his doors. All his contacts, they were shot. You hear me? You need fire. Hey! Tell your neighbor you need fire. Do you know why many of you have not been able to prosper? Your foundation is still fighting you. The strong man of your father's house has vowed that you will not cross a particular limit. Some of you, when it is time for you to be favored, that's when the anointing for misbehavior starts. It's a sign that something is fighting you. And you are dodging prayer. So when they want to get married, that is when the, the thing that is, the real thing that is doing them will start. When the thing has finished doing them, Pastor, talk to him for me now. He said he doesn't want to see me again. But when you are misbehaving, you will know that something is doing you. It's when you are finished misbehaving, that's when you, have, you will now know that uh, something is doing you. This pastor thought it was a joke. Before you know what's happening, no more preaching invitation. And that was how he came back to Ororope. It was that bad that he, do, he couldn't afford money to even rent a house in New Delhi. How much more worry? The prayer he didn't do then, he now ran to Apostle Suleiman to start doing the prayer. Another one, I'm telling you now, I'm using Pastor. Another one who felt he has gotten the word, he can prophesy. 
And God confirmed. He went and started. A rebel. He didn't serve well. He didn't get the blessing of his master. He went and started. Guess what? Guess what? The guests that came to sing for him in choir started fucking them. And that's how the church closed. And he relocated to another city. Someone now said, Hey, you don't come here. <laughs> hear me and hear me well. If you dodge prayer, you will still meet what prayer will kill. If you dodge prayer, you will still meet what prayer will kill. So prayer brings us out of the dungeon. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? It brings us out of the realm of satanic attack. We are the enemy cannot oppress you again. That's why you must stay in prayer to build voltage. Say with me, voltage. Prayer increases your spiritual temperature to the point you now become a high voltage. And when you become a high voltage, your word become what? Fire. The enemy that torments you now begin to leave you. That will be your testimony. No wonder scripture says concerning them, and they continued steadfastly in prayer. And they continue steadfastly in prayer. Please, I beg you, never get tired of prayer. No wonder Paul said, pray without ceasing. Pray with what? And they continued steadfastly in prayer. And they continue steadfastly in prayer. The more you pray, the closer you are to your breakthrough. The closer you are to your dream. The closer you are to your blessing. The more you pray. In this covenant day of divine rest, I believe God that what I've taken away prayer from you shall be restored to you. I'd like us to understand that divine rest is the will of God for every child of God. Jesus said the thief cometh to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I've come that you might have rest and that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So rest on every side not some side on every side is the will of God for every child of God you can't give yourself rest God is the one that will give you rest David said give me rest from trouble for vain is the help of man give me what rest from trouble Financial trouble, marital trouble, character trouble. Since God is the giver of rest, that's why we call it divine rest. You must seek Him so that you can enter your own rest. Let me take a very good example. Before you go to meet someone for financial assistance, you know that that person can give you what you need. True of us? And you believe that the moment you meet that person, you are free from this financial trouble. Am I correct? Can God give you what you are looking for? No, let's answer this question. Can God give you what you are looking for? So every rest any man will ever need is found with God. That's why scripture said, I have not said to the seed of Jacob 
to seek me in vain. Every rest that everyone will need is with God. If my rest is with God, your rest is with God, then you must believe him before you can receive it. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even unto them that believed on his name. So until you believe him, you never become it. You never enter your rest until you believe it. If someone makes a promise to you and you know that that person keeps to his word, what do you do? You just go and rest. Am I correct? Can God lie? Scripture say it is impossible for God to lie. It is impossible for God to lie. And if it is impossible for God to lie, believing God, number one, is the pathway to your rest. Believing God, number one, is your pathway to rest. Hebrew chapter 4, let's read from verse 1 to 3 and see what God has in store for us there. Hebrew chapter 4. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of. Verse 2. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, nor not being mixed with faith in them that had it. Look at verse 3 now. For we which have believed do enter into what? As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works we have finished from the foundation of the world, Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in. Your rest is already settled, but you must believe it before you will enter it. It's already settled. But you know the problem? You believe today, tomorrow you doubt small. You believe today, tomorrow you doubt small. One thing I've discovered, when people are not seeing immediate sign, they begin to worry. They begin to worry. But God cannot lie. God cannot lie. If he says it, he has settled it. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. Hear me? Your settlement starts with you believing. Scripture says, Blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance. On Friday, we are made to understand every time we believe God, believe his word, we steer his power. Our belief connects us to the power. Blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance. Nothing gets performed until someone starts believing. So if Satan is attacking you on any area now, what you just need is more testimonies in that area. More testimony. You know, testimony has a way of boosting your faith. Increasing your confidence. If God has been able to do it for one, I am the next on the line. If God has confirmed it in this person's life, he's going to confirm it in my life. You go settle down with any book that has to do with what you are expecting and increase your faith in that direction. As you are increasing your faith in that direction, that's how it will enter into your subconscious. If someone asks you, what's happening? God has done it. God has settled me. He's not a liar. His word is coming to pass in my life. You are at rest. If you believe someone, you will be at rest. I'm telling you the truth. If you believe someone, you'll be at rest. You'll be at rest. What are the key ways to enter in our rest? Number one, you must be born again. Tell your neighbor you must be born again. You may be in church, but you may not be in Christ. 
Scripture says, if a man be in Christ, not if a man be in church. If a man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. And all things have become what? New. The day you make up your mind to surrender your life to Jesus, that is the day. Some people have never answered or attack call. I don't bother again now from my mother's womb. <laughs> I've been coming. In fact, now inside church, they bomb me. They can even call you one in Sunday. <laughs> or one in Monday. <laughs> oh, <laughs> praise God. So accepting Jesus Christ, that's why he said, Come unto me, all ye that are labor and a heavy laden, and I will give you what? Rest. All that forces that are pursuing you in the night, when you enter Jesus, they cannot pursue you again. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? A man gave his life to Christ that should be around 1994 or 1995 in Ibadan. After he gave his life to Christ, he was in one of the occults. So, they appear to him in the dream that if he does not come back within seven days, he's a dead man. Do you know what? He replied that in three days, the God of Aleppo will kill all of you. They told him, if you don't come back in seven days, you are a dead man. He replied, in three days, if, if you don't surrender to Jesus, the God of Aleppo will kill all of you. Guess what happened? Three days. Say with me, three days. days. Manslaughter. They slept and never woke up. Can you now see what running to Jesus can do for someone? He surrendered to Jesus. Jesus now became his defense. They gave him seven days. He gave them three days. No, seven days is long. I will give you three days. So accepting Jesus Christ is your rest from fear. Rest from trouble. Rest from who is pursuing you. Hear me? The winch pursuing you is a constable. Is a constable in the realm of the spirit. Witches and wizards, they are occupying the lowest rank. Number two, how do we king to our all rest roundabout? You must be willing to learn the ways to rest on every side. And one of the ways I want to point us to us this morning is the ways of wisdom. Tell your neighbor wisdom. The ways of wisdom. Papa defines wisdom as knowing what to say and saying it. Knowing what to do and doing it. Knowing where to go and going there. Let me take two key examples and we move on now. You wrote an exam. And you too, you know you didn't write well. The next thing. Lord, hold the hand of the lecturer. Holy Ghost, blind his eye. Now lie, no go blind the eye. You didn't pass, you didn't pass. Do you know why you are troubled? You are troubled to the point now that you are not praying. Holy Ghost, take over the lecturer. He's a liar. You pass, you pass. You fail, you fail. Simple. Your trouble starts when you begin to do the wrong thing. You can't do the wrong thing and get the right results. Anytime someone is troubled, go and find out he has done the wrong thing. 
There's what we call the law of cause and effect. Which we call in this kingdom the law of seed time and harvest. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he what? Reap. If you sow to the flesh, you shall of the flesh reap corruption. If you also sow to the spirit, you shall of the spirit reap life. So what have you been sowing? Who has farmed before? You have been farming before, not a city farming. That is real village farming. God bless you. Now, you know the spots where big yam will come out from. Am I correct? Does it require prayer and fasting? Lord, this yam here, your what say whatsoever we lay hand to do, it must prosper. Yam change in size. Now lie. What you sow is what you what get. So one cure for rest is doing the right thing. I've discovered that people that are always on rest, they are not at rest. They have done wrong things. So they are looking for more support to join them. People that are at rest, they are always at rest. They are not trouble. No wonder people that walk in wisdom, they enjoy peace. When you walk in wisdom, you always know the outcome. You always know the outcome. I just remember something. We took one course in oceanography under marine geology. So, that course, the lecturer came as a borrowed lecturer because our oceanography lecturer was not around. He traveled for his sabbatical. So, the man came and terrorized everybody to the point that people were failing mercilessly. So, the nurse said, I should go and check the results. So, I now went to meet the man. He said, he said, your class, everybody failed, including you, me failed. So I just greeted him and left. I just left him. I said, Lord, we had an agreement before I started that I will not live with anything short of 2-1. If this man is going to be a problem, sack him. Do you know what? He still insisted that everybody failed. Professor Peters now came and said they should cancel his exam and use our continuous assessment. So I now saw the man saying, Thor. <laughs> he says, See me? I say, Yes. One, he was not a lecturer in our department, he was now using a geography pattern to come and mark us. That was where his problem started. Because I knew I didn't fail. Let me tell you the truth. Anywhere you are having unrest, go and check the wrong things you have been doing. On you till you start doing the right things. You can't have rest. You can't have rest. You can't have rest. Rest is a product of what you did. You want to have financial rest? Start sowing. God will not use prayer to break principle. Hear it. God will not use fasting to obtain the principle. <laughs> In the morning, sow thy seed. In the evening, we throw not thy hand. He said, Thou knoweth not if that of the day or that of the night, or God will make both alike to be what? good. He that goeth forth, bearing precious seed to sow, scripture say, shall doubtless return, bringing his ships with him. So the cure to financial rest is sowing, is tithing. You are not sowing, you want to, Father Lord, touch somebody's heart in this church to give me one million. Thief. Except by the Holy Ghost. Are you hearing? Someone can do it. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? But you cannot in your foolishness and be praying that kind of prayer. That's what some people do. God also knows that this person has been laboring. I will mention the other side now that we connect it so that you, so that you won't go and be thinking. Because we have some special people 
always in every church they know how to target people that have fine cars when they target the car they try to trace the person okay now this person eh, I go sit close to them next Sunday the next thing they will begin to follow you so I've been wanting to see you the Lord said I should meet you all those are lies let me tell you you may know much until you start doing right you may never enter rest for you to enter marital rest start building your character prayer cannot cure your character it is wisdom tell your neighbor wisdom some guests you think that they have head they don't get sense character zero their mouth is moving like parrots you will be so surprised that the person you thought you can manipulate with your beauty will soon discover you i hope you know character is like smoke it does not take time it will jump out and you have been praying nobody want to marry me lord this month you must give me husband god say go and cure your character i can't give you a serious brother before you go and damage his life you want to enter marital rest start purging your character say with me purge your character some sisters in churches they think that church is escape route they will still examine you they think that uh, prayer will cover character now lie you now me they tell you prayer will not cure your character Before you know what's happening, they will say, they know train and wear. I said it the other day. If you are a La Vista wife, may God deliver the man that will marry you. You know the one we call La Vista wife? That's where they eat dinner. Some sisters don't know how to enter kitchen. Cook! What did you prepare today? Your mouth go bend. I'm hitting them hard now. Because they want to enter rest. I will show you the pathway to rest. Many of you here, if we enter cooking competition, I will beat all of you. Yes, I'm telling you the truth. So please, <laughs> wisdom is the principal thing. In all thy getting, get understanding. Get it. 90% of your unrest is tied to foolishness. Not prayer. 90% is not prayer. Foolishness. If you want to enter rest, I am the Lord that teaches thee in the way that thou shouldest go and make profit. Know when to say something and know when to close your mouth. Even scripture said, a fool, when he keeps quiet, it counted as a wise man. Do you know why some people will never enter rest? They can never say, I am sorry. How can they hold me? They hold me inside a hole. Say, I am sorry. No one that scripture says, Pride goeth before a fall. Pride. And the more pride you become, you don't need witches and wizards to resist you. Scripture says, God resists the proud. God, not winch. You don't need winch. So if you want to cure your arrest, Lord, teach me 
what to say, when to keep quiet, when not to talk. The right thing to do. The next thing you need to do to enter your rest, serve God. You shall serve. I shall bless. Time will fail us to read that scripture. He said, and they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord, their God, with the whole of their heart. And they made a vow that anyone that will not serve the Lord shall be what? Put to death. And verse 15, and the Lord gave them rest round about. When they entered the covenant, God changed the pattern. Your story will change. So, if you are serving now, you are not wasting time. You are pressing to your rest. You shall serve. I shall bless. Service cancels causes. As you are serving, it's canceling it. As you are serving, it's canceling it. It's bringing you out of unrest. Your story will change. So, you can't miss the two. The wisdom cure and the service cure. In the second service, we look at faith and sacrifice. We're going to take faith and sacrifice in the second service. So, hear me? Keep growing in wisdom. The more wisdom you have, the more rest you enter. The more wisdom you have. Wisdom is a seed. Take wisdom steps. Hear me? Little by little, when you have sown the seed of wisdom, you are not at, you are not in tension, you are not afraid. It must work. I say it must work. I say it must work. Rise up to your feet. The foolish man. Scripture said, The labor of the foolish man wearieth everyone, for he knoweth not how to go into the city. David prayed a prayer. The righteousness of thy testimony is everlasting. He said, Give me understanding. And I shall live. Meaning, I will have rest. We are going to pray. Lord, help me to be more committed. Help me to be more dedicated. Holy Spirit, give me wisdom that will establish rest. Though thy beginning be small, thy latter end must greatly increase. You can't start small and end small. He say your latter end shall greatly increase. Lift up your voice and pray from the depths of your heart. Lord, I make up my mind today to serve you more better. To serve you more better. I make up my mind. Help me to be more dedicated. Help me to be more committed. Help me to be more dedicated. Help me to be more committed. I place a demand on your hand of help. Lord, help me to be more dedicated. Help me to be more committed in serving God. I want to press into greater rest with God. I want to press into rest round about. In the name of Jesus, I call for your help. I call for your help. In the name of Jesus, I call for your help. Spirit of God, help me. Lord, give me wisdom. Solomon asked of you, just only wisdom, just give me only wisdom. And you gave him rest on every side. You gave him financial rest. You gave him material rest. Lord, give me wisdom. Wisdom that will guarantee profitable living. Wisdom that will deliver me from stress. Wisdom that will deliver me from pressure. Wisdom that will deliver me from taking foolish steps. I need the wisdom that will guarantee rest on every side. Material rest. Marital rest. Career rest. Financial rest. Lord, rest. I need rest on every side. Lord, give me wisdom. Just as it is seen in our fathers. Lord, give me the wisdom that is from above. The wisdom that is from above that guarantees rest on every side. Let it be released upon me. Let it be released upon me. Let it be released upon me. Rest on every side. 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 On every side. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray.
all I exclude all his bow. You are here, you are not born again. You want to make it right with Jesus and have a chance and have a position for rest on every side. Wherever you are, put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name, I pray. If you pray that prayer with me, God bless you. Put your hands together for Jesus. Please help me welcome them. Come, come. God bless you. Put your hands together for Jesus. God bless you. Come, come, come. God bless you. I want to pray with you before we go now. All I need is you, Lord. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Put your hands together for Jesus. So that I can come to you shall we in no wise cast out they've identified jesus christ as their lord and as their savior as this oil come upon you the good hand of god rests upon you every area of unrest in your life they are swallowed up by the fire of god in the name of jesus christ beginning from today you enter rest on every side in the mighty name of jesus christ so shall it be in jesus name we pray put your hands together for jesus just turn and follow this man right now turn and follow this man